Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is my first official haul here at Snyder B Books and I purchased 21 titles from the book outlet for a grand total of $62. If you're unfamiliar with the book outlet, they are an online retailer of used and overstock books. Most of the books sold can be purchased in new or like new condition and even then, if you catch a good sale, which I did, you're going to get the majority of the books for between one and three dollars. I have a lot of titles to get through today, so let's just jump right in. The first book that I purchased was P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern. This was Cecilia Ahern's debut novel. It was an international bestseller turned into a film starring Hilary Swank. And I thought that the movie was very touching and of course it made me cry. So I figured why not read the book? Um, I did pick this book up for $3.19. The second book I picked up is a romance novel called Through the Night by Janelle Dennison. This book is about a casino hostess who basically has to flatter all the high rollers and get them to spend a little bit more money at the casino. Basically I bought this book because I'm very fascinated by casino culture. I don't particularly like to gamble, but I do find them fascinating. I purchased this book for $1.19. The next book that I purchased is called A Child Who by Simon Lelick. This book follows the lawyer who chooses to defend a 12-year-old boy accused of murdering an 11-year-old girl. I did pick it up for $1.29. Moving right along, the next book that I purchased is called Vacation by Matthew Costello. Let's see if we can get it to... there we go. This book is a post-apocalyptic novel about humanity turning into cannibalistic predators. I'm not sure if it's actual zombies or not. I haven't gotten that far. But basically after an attack, a man takes his family to a protected camp for a vacation and I have a feeling that these predators end up infiltrating this camp and vacation isn't as relaxing as initially hoped. I did pick up this title for $1.79. Next we have I'm Losing You by Bruce Wagner. This is a book about the inside world and ferocities of Hollywood um, examining kind of the psychological impact that it has both on the elite and the not so elite. I did pick it up for $1.79 so I figured it was definitely worth a try. Next we have Love May Fall by Matthew Quick. This is the author of The Silver Linings Playbook. And it's about a woman whose life has recently fallen apart. She retreats back to her hometown and sort of makes it her mission to rescue and revitalize a teacher from her past who has also experienced a recent traumatic event. This book was $4.79. I also picked up Wife 22 for $4.79. This book is by Melanie Gideon. It proclaims to be a funny look at marriage in today's technological age where a wife participates in an online survey about marriage, answering questions as Wife 22, being interviewed by Researcher 101. I know this book is going to commit one of the sins that I am not fond of, which includes <laughs> strings of nonverbal communication <laughs> via email or text or Facebook or tweeting or whatever it is as a main portion of the body of text. But um, sometimes it is done in a purposeful and innovative manner. So I'm hoping that that's where Wife 22 falls. My next title is No Reservations by Stephanie Gideon. This is part two of um, what is known as the Salon Games series. I haven't read any of them. It is a contemporary romance set in Philadelphia 
and it follows a hotel owner and a lingerie designer. While there will probably be characters in this that were introduced in the first book, I'm imagining that I don't need to know that story in order to follow and enjoy this one. This book was $1.19. Did I say that? Yeah. No. I can't remember. This next book is quite well known. Um, it is Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. It is a zombie novel. However, the main character who is a zombie sort of suffers from this higher level of consciousness and doesn't behave in a typical zombie manner. This particular book also includes the follow-up, The New Hunger. So I'm really excited to read this. In fact, I was willing to spend a little bit more on it. I did spend $5.39. Speaking of zombie novels, I did manage to pick up a copy of Code Zero by Jonathan Mayberry. Now, I won't be reading this book right away because I have not read Patient Zero, so I need to get my hands on that first. This is the follow-up um, to that, and I paid $4.79 for this. Recognizing a theme, like I think I'm willing to pay more for zombie or post-apocalyptic <laughs> novels. I never knew this about myself until I started talking out loud about it on YouTube. <laughs> I promise that I will not do all of these zombie books back to back to back <laughs> because I have another one. This is called The First Days. It's by Rhiannon Frader and this is the first book in the As the World Dies trilogy. Basically, this reminded me of <laughs> Thelma and Louise meets zombies. So we will see how that turns out. This also happens to be the most expensive book that I purchased at $6.39. Again, reinforcing the fact that my wallet knows no bounds when it comes to zombie books. We have just a few more to go. This is Love is Red by Sophie Jaff, and it is book one of the Night Song trilogy. Basically, there is a woman who is born to fulfill some sort of prophecy, and the only person who really knows that is a serial killer, and he's out to find her. Let's go ahead and take a break from the post-apocalyptic gloom for a minute. This book is called The Underwriting. It is by Michelle Miller, and it is women's fiction that follows a woman who joins a small team of folks developing a $14 billion, yeah, $14 billion dating app. This book was $5.39. So quite a departure from my typical <laughs> reading tastes. This is Finding Cinderella by Colleen Hoover. And Colleen Hoover has become extremely popular as of late, uh, especially amongst booktubers. And this is the story of Daniel who meets up with an anonymous girl and they spend one hour basically pretending that they have a perfect relationship and romance and then they go their separate ways. The shortest book in my haul and yet $4.79, which I think has something to do with Colleen Hoover's popularity. I've been wanting to and have started to pick up several novellas because I wanna do a review series that includes multiple novellas in the same review. So that's in development, <laughs> stay tuned for that. That does it for the paperback portion of this haul, so let's move on to the hardcover. The first is definitely the strangest book included in this haul, and I'm a little bit unsure about it, but I decided to give it a chance anyway. It's called The Transcriptionist. It is by Amy Rowland, and it is the story of a transcriptionist at a newspaper who comes across the story of a blind woman being mauled by a lion at the local zoo. And the transcriptionist realizes that she had had a conversation, a casual conversation with this blind woman a few days earlier, the contents of which lead the transcriptionist to 
search for answers as to why this woman was in the lion's den of a zoo. So definitely strange. I'm not sure what to think, but I did pay $1.79 to find out. Next, we have a book called The Burning by Jane Casey. This is the first book in a series that follows a female detective and she is hunting for and trying to solve the crimes of a serial killer. This book was $1.89. Similarly, we have the book Let It Burn by Steve Hamilton, which follows Detective Alex McKnight as he tries to solve some brutal crimes in the city of Detroit. And I will read any fiction novel set in Michigan. That is my home state and I've grown up sort of visiting and by no means being a stranger to Detroit. So I'm automatically fascinated and definitely want to find out how Michigan and Detroit is portrayed through the eyes of others. This book was a whopping $1.29. All right, that box down there is almost empty. <laughs> This book, Crooked Numbers by Tim O'Mara, it is another crime, mystery, suspense novel. Um, it is about a couple of murders of young men poised to attend an exclusive private school and the parents have appealed to one particular man to try to solve the killings. Um, Again, a whopping dollar twenty nine. Now, I myself don't necessarily believe in coincidences, but I do know that sometimes there are happy accidents. And when I busted into my book outlet box, I experienced one. So the first book I pulled out was A Killing of Angels by Kate Rhodes. And when I started refreshing my memory on the book synopsis, I realized that this is a sequel to another book and I'm like oh, damn but then I kept going through my book outlet box and I had purchased the first one too I didn't do that on purpose I just did it because they sounded pretty freaking interesting so this is Crossbone Yards this one in particular A Killing of Angels sounded pretty fascinating to me because of the mark I guess that this particular serial killer leaves behind where um, he's basically portraying himself as an avenging angel so I thought it sounded interesting I will though read them in order and to do that I have to start with Crossbones Yard first these books Crossbones Yard a dollar twenty nine and Killing Angels a dollar twenty nine Last but certainly not least, in fact, I saved the book that I might be most excited about uh, for last. It is a book called Midnight by Kevin Egan. And I had never heard of this book, so I didn't go searching it out. But when I was reading about it on Book Outlet, I became absolutely fascinated with this concept. It involves workers at a county courthouse in New York. and there's a rule there that if a judge dies that judge's staff gets to stay on for the remainder of the calendar year before they're let go just to wrap up loose ends and whatnot well <laughs> this book is about a group of staffers that discover that their judge has died on December 31st so the book follows what I can only imagine will be a very stressful attempts to hide the judge's death until after midnight so that they can continue to work for a full calendar year. Again, no clue why this spoke to me so much, but I'm just really super excited to read it. It sounds like one of the most unique books I've picked up in a long time. And it was $2.39. So that does it for my book outlet haul. 
If you've read any of these books or you've heard good or bad things about them, please feel free to tell me all about that down in the comments section. I want to know your thoughts and opinions on them. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, then feel free to do so. Depending on the books that I finish, I post reviews on Movie Mondays, Rated R Thursdays, Free Book Fridays, as well as hauls like this one, TBRs, and any other good stuff I can think of. Thanks for watching you guys and for reading. I will see you all very soon.